Smoke and mirrors is what we're going to talk about today. <clears throat> smoke, as I tuned into the energy with the guides, and I said, smoke and mirrors. All right. Sounds great. Sounds like a catchy topic. It's a chapter in a book. Can you tell me what you mean by that? The smoke is the illusion. The smoke is like fog that prevents us from seeing. The smoke is our illusion that we think is our reality right now. Mirrors, mirrors always give back to us what we see when we look into them and or what within us needs to shift and change. When we ever, whenever we look into a mirror, an actual mirror, physical mirror, we see where we are in that moment. We, if we tune into energy and feel energy, we feel where we are in that moment. It just reflects it back to us. It kind of magnifies where we are and how we feel. If we look at the mirrors that come through the energy of children, the energy of spouses, the energy of parents, the energy of friends, these mirrors are giving us the things within us that we need to either learn a lesson around or shift and change about ourselves. The transformation that could occur within us if we would tune in. Okay. Smoke is also considered energy in motion or emotion. Now stay with me here. Our emotions are triggered by energy. That energy is simply a tell, tell, tell sign, tell, tell, tell sign of where we are in a frequency, a vibration. The emotion, the physical symptom of what's happening, the anger, the frustration, the happiness, the sadness, the joy, the bliss, all of this is physicalness. The physicalness feels these emotions, puts into sensation the energy that's going on. So if we shift the energy, we shift the emotions. Did you see that floaty? We got floaties. Totally distracted me, spirit. Totally distracted me, spirit. Okay. Smoke is the illusion. Mirrors are the lessons, the triggers that are brought to us to see the realness, the reality of where we are. They're there to assist us, if we tune in, to shift and change, to transform. We don't create change in a mirror, but more so in our mind's eye. We don't go to a mirror and go, okay, Jax, we want to drop 50. Come on, Jax. I'll, I'll wait. See, see, this will get patient with, right? <laughs> Show me hearts. How many would get patient with this if you could go to a mirror and go, we want to drop 50. <clears throat> we want to grow our hair real long. I want to get these wrinkles gone. How many people would be super patient if we knew that the mirror would give us that? Silliness. In reality, if we would see ourselves, the healthier version of us, the more youthful version of us, in our mind's eye, it is sure to be created. We create in our mind's eye, third eye. We do not create in a mirror. Past conditioning, past beliefs and truths, this is often what the smoke and mirrors are filled with, past. The ego comes in because these ego things can only be given to you from this right now moment and beyond, past. Not from this right now moment and beyond in a future. Your ego can't see the future. That's why it's always freaking out. It doesn't know if that next step is gonna kill you. So it's trying to help you out by just keeping you safe. But see, the spirit within you knows where expansion is. Expansion's in the future. Always in the future. Always in the future. Let me say that again because that was good. Expansion always occurs in the future. What you are doing right now leads you to expansion. Past the things you can't recreate. It's the place you can't go again. It's the place where you've either learned lessons or in your right now moment are learning those lessons so that in the future you expand. That next moment of yours is expansion because of what you just did for yourself right now. We allow ourselves to get fooled 
we are fooled by the five physical senses. We think those are real. See, we think the hearing, the seeing, the touching, the smelling, the tasting is real. It's not. It's what we're using to navigate our physical experience. It's what we're using to learn lessons that we need to expand the spirit. Spirit works in conjunction with the physicalness to learn and grow. But can you see a deceased or departed loved one? Can you feel a deceased or departed loved one? Can you hear the physicalness of a deceased or departed loved one? No. But you know, for those of you who believe, I do, I communicate with them all the time, that there's still energy, there's still spirit. And that is real. They give us signs, they give us hints, they give us sensation. Spirit likes to, my guide said, one could look at the physical senses that I just named and some could see maybe creating for themselves spiritual senses. My spiritual senses feel, that psychic feel, third eye vision, creation, a spiritual sense, vibration and frequency and freedom. Freedom, infinite. Those are the spiritual senses. Those are the things that are realer than what we might be feeling right now because it's gonna change. When you learn about you, you're learning about the universe. When you learn about the universe, you're learning about you. You are never disconnected from the source of all that is. But see, the ego wants to create this illusion, smoke and mirrors, that you are, that in fact, it's every man for himself or herself, that there's no one here to help you, that you are a victim to your reality. And that's not true. Our present moments the, the, the world as we see earth, thank you, earth, they say use earth, earth as we see it right now might be attempting to show us limitation, restriction, fear, sickness. But when we go inward to connect to our higher self, when we go inward to find the universal power that exists within me, I know different, I feel different, I see different. And the more that I believe in it, the more that it becomes the reality that I see. One of the things that they gave me this morning, which I was really creeped out at first, I have to admit this, but the vision was epic once they walked me through it. Because originally I was like, is this spirit or ego? Can you give me the integrity of the guide that I am connecting with, please? Because something's going on here and this is weird. But to drive this point home a little bit more. <clears throat> they took me to a fun house. You know, when you go to the amusement parks or the fairs, sometimes the fun house sits the mirrors. If you don't, let me know and we can describe it different, but I'm hoping that you do. In the fun house, when you go in and you go through the maze, it's a bunch of different mirrors and these mirrors distort vision. What they do is they make you look really big tall, fat, really small, super tiny, super skinny, but it never defines you and it never actually alters who you were before you got in there. This physical world is a fun house. This physical world is full of smoke and mirrors. This physical world does not define you. However, the things that you learn here, the connections that you make and the expansion that you create through the contrast of the fun house and, and, and how you exit was, is actually going to expand not just you and your soul, but also the universe. When we choose to be see, to see beyond the ego, when we choose to stop and really look at, am I seeing something that's distorting the true vision, my ability to see with true vision? You know, um, Catholics and Christians and friends just alike. 
they like to do the whole, what would Jesus do in this moment? What would Jesus say? What would Jesus do? God, if Jesus was here, what would he say about this? Because we're always looking to see things differently. But we have the ability to do exactly what Jesus did. Because that it's what he did. He connected to source all the time. He tuned in. He made source the priority before anything else got done. Before anybody else's needs were met. He tuned into himself and connected to the source. If we would all make that the priority before any big decision, any big negotiation, any big connection opportunity, any big creative project or venture expansion that we would do, we would be so much more fruitful. So what would Jesus do? Jesus would tune into himself. That's what Jesus would do. So when you're, you know, driving down the highway and you're ready to flip somebody off and you're thinking, what would Jesus do? Jesus would tune into themselves, himself. And he would say, why am I feeling the way I'm feeling right now? Why am I angry in this moment? Did we think that the person that was just flying by us could have caused injury? So there's a bit of fear, of insecurity in the physical body that we could have been harmed. Acknowledge that. Acknowledge that and heal that from within you. Nobody can heal you, but nobody can harm you either. This is all something that we are starting to take a bit more ownership around. And to that credit, one of the things that has become very obvious is the mental health and wellness that people are seeking more assistance with. You know, it is one of the things that <clears throat> many people, because of the world, because of the healing that needs to happen for whatever reason, are, are, are having a hard time staying focused on that positive, optimistic outlook. You know, the world shows them something different. Their emotions show them something different. Their ego is super, super loud. And so August was all around rebirth and, and really looking at all of that so that you could recreate yourself in a different version. Because anything that comes up that triggers you is meant to help you heal when you tune in and you go investigate what's going on. When you don't allow yourselves to be consumed by the smoke and mirrors of it all. September is all about creation. It's about expansion. It's about growth. It's about receiving the harvest for all that was planted in August. See, August, we did some investigation. We went inward. September is going to show you, or it's going to give you downloads that will help you create the, in the new version of who you are. We have to check this first. Because if we're thinking limitedly, we're going to produce limitation. If we're thinking lackfully, we're going to produce that much more lack. When we know we don't want that. We all are conscious of this. We've been doing this long enough. We know exactly what we're talking about here. We know what we don't want. We know all this. We do. We need some pep talks. We need some getting back in there and doing some deeper healing. We need some inspiration and motivation. That's what we need. Look around you and find that with your in your spaces, in your groups, on your pages, in your friends, okay? In yourself. Oh,